today. How about we make some rolls? It is a delicious recipe. It is versatile because you can make them hoagie style long or round, which is what I'm going to do in this video. Hoagie style I, is the go-to for me. I make them for my son for his lunches for school, but it is such a good roll for pulled pork sandwiches hot chicken sandwiches. You absolutely could use them for burger buns. You just need to press them a little flatter. Sky's the limit. You could make them as small or as large as you like. It is a delicious recipe. So let's gather our ingredients and let's make some rolls. Okay, I'm gonna show you quickly what goes into the rolls two cups of hot water. And as I've said before, I always heat my bowl up filled with hot water just to get it warm. Two cups of hot water in there. Half a cup of warm water in my measuring cup. Warm because you don't want your yeast to be killed. Two tablespoons of yeast. I use um, SAF, instant yeast three tablespoons of sugar. Obviously, this is more than three tablespoons. I just scoop it out of there. It is one tablespoon of salt. I use kosher salt. Um, I believe regular table salt is more potent, so drop it down if you're using table salt. And this is six cups of all-purpose flour. And um, I will show you as it's mixing if it seems like it needs a little bit more, if it's not cleaning the sides of the bowl. This is what I keep my yeast in, and I keep my yeast in the freezer. Okay, let me get this hooked onto the camera holder, and we will add these things to the bowl. First, I put my yeast into the hot water and give it a little, just a little stirring because it's going to bubble and get active in the warm water and you want that to happen. These rolls are so easy and so delicious and the most tedious part of this whole thing is uh, every 10 minutes turning your mixer on to knock the rolls down and they're rising. Okay, you're gonna set this aside and let it get all happy. And into here, you're going to put in, as I said, you have the two cups of hot water three tablespoons of sugar, one, two, three, and one tablespoon of salt. do a combo of oil. I do both olive and vegetable. It calls for five tablespoons of oil. So I'm going to do three of this. One, two, three three of the olive oil and two of the vegetable. Please know you can do whatever you like. You could do all, okay, that's, you can do all vegetable, you can do all olive, canola, what you like. And you're going to do uh, 
three cups of flour to start. Before your yeast even gets in there. So half, and then we're going to move over to the mixer and get this going. Okay, it's in there. I start it very slow just to get it going. That's what you're gonna have. It's gonna come together slowly and then you're going to add your the yeast gets all bubbly and foamy. with my kitchen is, is what I mix my bread. Yeah. We'll let that go for a minute and then we'll start adding the other flour to it. Okay, that's mixed nicely. Yes, and now we'll start adding the flour. You add a cup at a time, and you let it get incorporated. Okay. This is the boring part of bread making. Okay, you can see this is not clearing the sides of the bowl, so it definitely needs more flour. And some people say do a tablespoon at a time. I just fill my cup measuring cup about two-thirds of the way and very carefully just dump a little in and watch to see if it's going to do the right thing. You want the sides to be completely coming off. You don't want any stickiness. Not yet. And weather plays a big part in that too. And how your bread is going to behave. Starting to look better, you can see what it's doing. It's starting to pull away, but I think it's going to need a little more. And you can touch it too. You can feel the tackiness. It's okay if it's a little tacky, but if it's really sticking to your fingers, no good. Yeah, it's going to 
gonna need a little more. So I'm gonna grab a little more flour. Yes, very nice. Once it's come together, then you're going to set your timer for five minutes. There you go. You see that at the bottom? It's just pulling it all clean. That's what you're looking for. Okay, I'm going to put my timer on for five minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, it's been kneading for five minutes. I'm going to shut it off and you could see how nice it cleaned the bowl. So now we're going to do five rises and knockdowns for 10 minutes each. I'll cover this with my uh, dish towel and just let it be for 10 minutes and then I'll show you how it looks after that, and we'll let the mixer bring it down. Alrighty, my timer went off for the first 10 minutes. And you can see it in there. We'll give it, it just needs 10 seconds of a spin. And that's it. That's all you need. And you're going to do that four more times. Cover this puppy back up. It's actually a little cool in my kitchen today. We're toggling between uh, spring and summer here. Timer for 10 minutes, four more times. When it's all done, we'll come back. All right. We've done our five 10 minute knockdowns and rises. This is what it looks like. And I really didn't knock it down yet. My counter was white. I just use a Clorox wipe and let it dry. I have my little canister with flour in it. I have my dough scraper, just it down. You don't need a lot of flour on the counter. And dump it out. Give it a stretch. I would describe this as um, a, a thick, poofy, it's pillowy dough. And I am making hot chicken sandwiches. So I want nice size rolls. You don't have to be perfect with the stretching out, just flatten. And I go in half. And then in half, and then in half, and then I'm going to get a few more because this is giving me eight, but I want more than eight. That guy's big. I'll cut him in half. This guy's big. I'm going to cut him in half. So we got, uh, I want 12. Okay, now here's what we do. I will borrow from some others to make 
them all as even as possible because you could see some of these are just way too big. So like I'll put some of that there and I just put this here and I kind of just go like this to get them into a ball. that see that's so easy and it's so pillowy this guy's a hair too big I can you can feel the size difference as you do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. That is the most important thing to remember. Doesn't, this one's a little bit too big. Doesn't have to be exact. You can, you can get your scale and weigh them, but it's not necessary. Actually, I'm getting 11, not 12. That's all right. Now, watch this. If you really want to have a perfect circle, you see how I drag it? You're just dragging it, and it gives such a nice round. Drag it. Just move them over. And you have such a nice round roll. Okay, I'm gonna finish these up and put them on a cookie sheet and I'll show you how they look. So I have six rolls on my sheet. I always use parchment paper. I can't help it. It's not worth it to me to deal with something sticking. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. I use parchment and I spray it with whatever I'm using at the time. Today happens to be Pam. So you give it a spray, you put it on, and you cover it. And these are gonna rise for another 30 minutes while your oven preheats to 375. So we'll be back when that's ready. Guys, look how beautiful and puffy and risen they are. The puffed up beautiful. And now I take one egg that I just put a little bit of water. I just go like this a couple of times with water, beat it and brush each roll. Easy peasy. Now these ones, I'm gonna sprinkle the infamous everything seasoning on. And I will leave four plain because believe it or not, some don't like stuff on their rolls and I don't want anyone to not be happy. So these are all gonna get covered. And I'll show you. And then they're going in the oven. This, my mama sent this to me. Uh, just bagels, everything seed mix. Because, you know, that's what mamas do. And my mama does it for me. And we sprinkle it. This is going to bake. It really depends on your oven. I do it for eight minutes. Switch. Rotate top to bottom, bottom to top, and give them one of these, and then give them about another five, but it can take up to 25 minutes. So know your oven and watch it. And when they're out, I'll show you how beautiful they look. Alrighty, and there you have it. These are beautiful rolls right out of the oven. They look gorgeous. 
They are light, they are fluffy, they are delicious. I will include the recipe either in the description box or I'll make a slide with it and you could screenshot it. Either way, the recipe will be there. You can adjust these sizes to be smaller. You could make them hoagie shape, which is what I often do so that um, I make my son's uh, lunch sandwiches on them and I top them with sesame seeds when I make the hoagie type. They're fabulous and these are big enough where they're gonna make a nice hot chicken sandwich. Alrighty folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, go and create something wonderful. Bye-bye now.